see if we can jog your memory. Maybe you remember about a year ago we first saw a car called the Starion. It's sold by Mitsubishi. Well, sales of the Starion Sports Coupe have been strong enough that Chrysler, Mitsubishi's American connection, wanted its own version to further beef up its performance image. The result was our next subject, the $12,187 Dodge Plymouth Conquest. Maybe you also remember that we found the original Starion was very fast but had a few rough edges. So has a name change and some tutoring from the Highland Park Finishing School really made a difference? Well, there's only one way to find out. If there's one thing that drew boos on the original Mitsubishi Starion, it was the overzealous oriental styling. But the first thing we found was that the Dodge Plymouth Conquest clone is devoid of that triple set of hood scoops and air vents that cluttered up the rather striking overall shape. Also gone is the molded bumper license plate holder and the cowcatcher look. A less radical chin spoiler eliminates that. The revised Conquest skin looks so much better that they're giving Starions the same alterations. The next point of contention was the interior. Overall, it seemed busy and cluttered, while the dash itself was stark and functional. So Chrysler put in more demure colors and fabrics, providing a clean, purposeful feeling to match the seat's firm, supportive padding. Instrumentation remains the same, with our car having the preferred standard gauge package. Dials are big, clear, and well positioned. You can get this electronic cluster as an option, but we found its TAC badly lagged actual engine RPM. One feature left unaltered from the Starion is the indoor seat belt. It ends once and for all having to crawl over or under tangled belts when trying to reach the rear seats. Power is Mitsubishi's now venerable 2.6 liter silent shaft four cylinder with an easy-to-service top-mounted turbocharger. Power ratings are 145 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, but with the maximum of 185 pounds of torque coming in very early at only 2,500 RPM. That makes straight-line acceleration in the Conquest close to exhilarating. Zero to 60 times are a fine 10.1 seconds. Over the standing quarter mile, with modest wheel spin in the first two of its five gears, our typical test time of 16.9 seconds resulted in an 80 mile per hour terminal speed. That makes the 2,930 pound Conquest faster than Chrysler's own homemade Daytona Laser Sports Coupes. Okay, so we already knew speed was easy for the Conquest, but then we found that Starion handling is also Conquest handling. It's not bad, mind you, just confusing. With four-wheel independent suspension, gas-filled struts, and thick stabilizer bars, you expect flat, fast cornering. But while the ball-type steering is quick, it communicates the car's intentions poorly. That makes it all too easy to exceed the system's power boost. When pushed hard, the Conquest goes from slight plowing understeer as you enter a turn to tail hanging oversteer a second later. Fortunately, the coupe's more than ample power allows you to regain control easily. The four-wheel disc brakes on our Conquest did not have Mitsubishi's rear-wheel anti-lock system, but they worked well anyway, with mostly straight stops of only 121 feet on average from 55 miles per hour. Pedal pressure is good, although one of our car's front pads did lock up before the other on occasion. Conquest fuel economy is rated by the government at 21 city and 31 highway. Our test sample did no better than 20 on our MotorWeek Suburban mileage loop. We have to add that a similarly equipped Starion we tested earlier did deliver a consistent 27. So has the Conquest, nay Starion, really changed? Well, like a chameleon, just enough to fit in. Its looks, inside and out, are now more refined. Its power is formidable, even if the handling quirks are still with us. And you might end up saying that a Starion by any other name makes a most able conquest.